curated for my clients and walking them through from idea to building to marketing to sales. I'm telling you, business is business. At the end of the day, you have to know how to market. You have to know how to sell. You have to build your credibility. You got to build your proof of work. You got to build your receipts, right? You got to get all of that. Okay. So if you join me, say hello. Today is day three of the business plan starter toolkit of my powerhouse live video series. So like I said, if you join me, say hello, let me know you're here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started because I'm running late. I think I'm about 20, 25 minutes late. I said I was going to get here. Hi, it just says Facebook user. So I don't know who you are, but let me know who is joining me and who's on here. So I'm going to just move down to the business, uh, the powerhouse business plan starter kit. Okay. So hopefully some of you guys will watch later as well. But um, if you catch me live, speak to me, ask me questions. Don't be shy to come in my inbox. Uh, I prefer to you ask questions in the comments and not be shy and ask questions in the inbox because you have to start building your courage to do the things that you're scared to do. Okay. You don't want to be shy. You want to be able to just ask questions. So for those that don't know me and maybe are new to following me, I'm Chandra Brooks, founder of the Powerhouse Academy and the Powerhouse Women. I started this program in 2018, started my business in 2017 started this program in 2018 based on a vision, based on a strictly an idea and a, and a thought. So I want you guys to know everything, every idea, every successful item or object or anything was an idea. All right. So never think that your idea is horrible or you'll never be able to launch it because everything, every object and any, any, everything that we use, makeup, houses, um, cars, everything is based off an idea. So don't get discouraged when you have an idea, go after it. God wouldn't have placed it inside you if it wasn't meant for you. I promise you he wouldn't have. So this is a business plan starter toolkit. So here's my little bio. Most of you guys know who I am. All right. Um, so you can see that later. All right. So the first thing that I always tell my clients is clarity. Okay. You have to get clear. A lot of people feel that, um, you know, or not feel, but I, I have a lot of people that come to me and they have five ideas. They have 10, they have a hundred ideas and they want to launch all those ideas at the same time, or they go and launch. I could tell you the most hard headed people will go launch five or six different side hustles and businesses. And they're making a little bit money here and there, but they're not making a good amount of money because they're focusing on so many things. So you have to be able to get clarity and get clear on your business, on what exactly it is that you should be doing, right? On that thing that you should be doing, on, on, on you know, what you're really good at, what you're not good at, knowing what you're not good at, knowing what makes you passionate, makes you want to do it, all right? Because if you're not passionate and if you're not clear on what you need to be doing, you're not going to continue to do it. You will stop. You will stop, I promise you, and then you'll go find and you'll go look at the next shiny object and want to go after that. So clarity is number one with everything I do with every client is clarity. Let's get clear on what business we're going to focus on. I will never, I will never help anybody start two to three businesses at one time. I will never encourage somebody to work on two to three businesses at one time. Mm-mm. That's not the way to serial entrepreneurship. The, the, the way to serial entrepreneurship is starting a business, making that successful and profitable. Then you can invest in another business, bring that on and so, so on and so forth. Launching and trying to dibble and dabble in so many things at one time, it will leave you broke and it'll leave you confused. It'll leave your audience confused and um, you won't have a be known for something. You're going to be known for all these different things. Don't you want to be known for something? You're, wel you're welcome, um, Daryl Jean. Daryl Jean, I'm sorry if I, I said it wrong. You're welcome. Okay, so you've got to focus and you got to zone in. All right, so clarity. Are you clear on what you're trying to build? It's so important because any journey, you have to have a destination, right? You got to have a destination to that journey. You can't just be in going free for all. You're like, I'm just going to get on the road and wherever the road takes me, that's where I'm going to land. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't, right? So it shouldn't make sense to you in business. You have to have a clear path 
on where you're trying to go. I'm trying to build a financial empire that has boom, 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 boom. I'm trying to build a coaching business that has boom, 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 boom. I'm trying to build a auto mechanic shop that has four mechanic that has four shops in my city. Okay, it's clear on the direction we're going. We know where we're going. But if you have no direction, you're going to just be trying all kinds of different things and it's not going to work out. You have to get clear. You have to get clear. So, you know, is this something that you love? Right. I always encourage to do something that you love because it's going to hold you there longer. It's going to keep you on track longer because it's just not going to be about the money. It's about your passion and it's about what you love to do. Right. Is this something you're great at? That's the easiest path to money, you guys, is to do something you're great at, not something that you have to learn and then launch, right? Not something that you have to figure out and then do it. What's that thing you're really, really good at? And do that. Sell that. Figure out how you can sell it because a lot of people don't even know how to monetize their own genius. I was just sitting down with a friend last night and she was, she's on disability and she's like, I have no income. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was like, what did you do in your past jobs before? And she's like, oh, I was an executive assistant. I was an admin. And I was like, become a virtual assistant. Do admin work for bit small businesses like me, right? We, I always need somebody to do something for me, a spreadsheet, a, a, you know, a project, cold calling, whatever it is. I always need somebody and there's thousands and millions of people just like me. And she was like, I didn't even think about that. Do what you do well. Monetize your genius. Monetize what you do well. Don't just go and grab something because somebody told you that was the next best thing to do. Right. I have a nephew and a son. They, they, they're on YouTube. Right. You guys are all on social media. You see that you see the uh, the webinars. Oh, start real estate wholesaling. These two don't nothing about no real estate. OK. They ain't got no license. They don't even own a house. They've never owned a house. And I'm not knocking people going and learning something new. But I'm saying, like, don't just jump on it because you heard your friend is making a lot of money in Florida off of real wholesale real estate. Don't just jump on the bandwagon. If you're going to jump into something, make sure it's something you're passionate about. And you're learning more of it. Don't just jump on the bandwagon. And a lot of people, we have shiny object syndrome. We fall for the next big thing to make a lot of money. How am I going to make money fast? We all want to make money fast. And if you really want to be in business and, and, and be successful, you have to be in it for the long haul. And the only way you're going to be in it for the long haul to really still see true success is if you're doing what you love and doing what you're good at. I always say pair what you love and what you're really good at. And let's see how we can create a monetizable business off of that. Right. And a lot of people don't know how to figure that out. And I'm very, very good at that. That's what I help my clients do is really figure that out and then build that into a profitable business that they can sell. All right. Um, have you done the research if there is a market out there for what you're trying to provide? Because if there's no market, like if somebody came to me and said they wanted to start an eyelash business or an eyebrow business, and I'm not downing that right now, but I can tell you it's a, it's a fad. I would say if you are in that type of business, you need to start looking at what's next in your field in eyelashes. So you study that and you if you need to create your own eyelash kits to sell because now people are buying them for themselves, right? So how can you be ahead of the game? You have to be innovative and be ahead of the game. I wouldn't encourage anybody because th those are trends, right? I don't do business in trends. I do I I always tell my clients what's sustainable and what do people need? What kind of problem do you solve? Any type of business, you have to solve a problem. People will buy and pay for, for your services if you're solving a problem. So have you done the research if there is a market out there for what you're trying to provide, right? Clarity is key and clarity is cash. Once you're clear, you're going to be able to know exactly how you're going to monetize that. The next thing I always say is belief, right? A, 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 a huge part on why people do not move forward on their businesses, on their ideas, because they don't believe that they can do it. They don't truly believe in themselves like that yet. And I, and I am proof because I, you know, when I was working with my coach and we were creating Powerhouse Academy, I, I thought at first in my business, I was going to teach people how to write grants. I was going to teach people how to start nonprofits. I was going to raise money for nonprofits I, because that's what I did in my professional life. I did not necessarily love it, but it's what I knew how to do. 
And so I thought that that's what I needed to do in my business. And, you know, she's looking at my resume and she's like, Shonda, what do people come to you for? And I said, well, a lot of women come to me for mentorship. They want to know, how did you get those awards? How do you know all these people? How are you all at all these events and galas? Like, I want to do what you do. I want to be involved. I want to be active. I want to get a TED Talk. I want to do all this. And I was like, yeah, that's what they come. She's like, you're a powerhouse. She's looking at my resume and all my awards. And she's like, you're a powerhouse. Teach women how to be a powerhouse, how to be powerhouses in their own community. And I was like, nobody's going to pay me for that. And she's like, I bet they will. I bet they will. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm moving into cohort 18. <laughs> Hundreds of women across the country have been able to change their lives because of powerhouse. And that was just an idea working through with my coach and getting clarity on that. It was just an idea. So don't be scared. And, and I didn't believe at that time. I had to borrow my confidence from my coach. And this is what I tell my clients. Borrow my confidence until you have your own. Right. I have to make them believe oh, you are the best at this girl. Let's go. I don't pump your head unless I'm looking at your resume. I'm seeing all these years and you do it really well. You do it with your eyes closed. That's what you need to sell. And, and what you do with your eyes closed and what you're really good at can solve a problem. That's what you need to sell. You just need to learn how to sell it. You just need to find your audience. You just need to find your clients. Once you know how to find your clients, then you learn how to pitch to them. You, you learn what they need and you provide it and you fulfill a service, right? So before you can get anyone to believe in anything that you're trying to sell or, or, or do, you got to believe yourself. And if you don't believe, nobody else is going to believe. So how would people know you're passionate about your product or service? Do you guys think I'm passionate about Powerhouse? I'm sure you do. Because you hear about it all the time. I built a brand. Because I have marketed every day since 2017, whether I'm in the hospital or anything tragically happens in my family, I still marketed myself. All right. Does the evidence show that you're about that life? So I have people that come to me and they want to start selling right away. And I'm like, people don't even know you're an expert in that. Why would anybody buy from you if they don't know that you are the person that does this? So you have to show and prove. You have to get out there. You have to put yourself online. The online space is the number one tool to market yourself. This is where everybody is holding their phone in their face 24-7. So why aren't you on social media every day marketing yourself? Oh, I don't have time. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, you do. We make time for the things that we need. So I don't even want to hear it. We all have time to do the things that we want to do. So there's no excuse for you not to be marketing yourself every day on social media about your business every day all right so if you don't if, if people don't know if your audience doesn't know you're there how are they supposed to hire you R right so and a lot of reasons why people are not showing up online and marketing themselves because they don't believe in themselves enough i don't even care anymore i, I believe in myself so much i have so many receipts and testimonials that you can't keep me offline and bragging about what i do but that's a journey. It's taken me a while to get here and it's going to take you a while to get there. But you got to work with somebody to help you believe. And you have to be able to see other people that have done it. I know that I didn't believe that I could make six figures in a month or more, uh, five figures in a month or somebody's salary in five days until I seen somebody that looked like me do it. I didn't believe. So you got to get in circles. You got to get around people that are doing the same thing, right? That are doing what you want to do. All right. So you can't sort of like your product or service or just want to start a business to make money. Believing passionately about your business is a huge part of success. I cannot push that harder. Why you got to love what you do? Because if you don't, like I said earlier, you're not going to push and you're not going to keep going during hard times. So don't even try it. Don't be hard headed. I'm telling you a lot of y'all. And I'm, I'm even talking about my own kids. I could tell you my own kids. <laughs> OK, my kids are entrepreneurs because they watch me and they see me. Right. They want to jump on the next big thing. But I could already tell you that my kids have been through a couple ideas already. And I let them do that journey. Right. And I'm, I tell them to hire other coaches or I've hired coaches for them because I want them. They, I know they're not going to listen to me. So I hire other people and those people are telling them the same exact thing that I'm telling them. Right. But our kids don't listen to us. They always listen to other people. They are listening. They, they obviously are not. They obviously are paying attention because they're entrepreneurs and they want to be entrepreneurs. So I ain't worried about it. I'm not mad at all. 
I really like to encourage my my kids to be independent and and get another coach. And it also justifies because these coaches are telling them the exact same thing that I've been telling them. And it's fine, right? It's fine. But you have to do what you love. You're going to go through some bumps in the road. But I can tell you, working with a coach got me there faster because I didn't have to keep trying something, trying something, and trying something and figuring it out and then, you know, figuring it out later. I think I was able to figure out my niche faster by working with a coach and working through that and really having that coach see my blind spots and what I could build. So you must believe before anybody else believes. Market research. Is there a market for your business? Right. Who will be your competition? Who's out there selling what you're selling? Have you done that research? And it's not to copy them. It's to see how they're moving, how they're shaking, how they're making their money. Go see their products and services. Check out their prices. It's research. Right. Base your prices off of them. See, you know, see how they're showing up on their social media. Right. Do that. You know, Google them, check them out and see, you know, what's coming up for them. You got to check that out so then you can see and know what you're working with. All right. Have you visited other similar companies, websites, social media? I just said that. What is the industry worth and how is it growing? So, for example, you guys see what I have on today. Right. This is my scrub life. I would say uniform, I guess. We don't really have uniforms, but we made some things for us to wear. Or I'll, I have to go to a dental convention today um, and marketing Scrub Life, right? My second business. For those that don't know, I have a scrub, medical scrub business with my partner, Samantha uh, Bayoso, and we um, sell medical scrubs. We have a store in Oakland. We have an online store. We do drop shipping, and then we do big contracts with people like Kaiser, Sutter Health, uh, Contra Costa College, um, we provide their the uniforms for the students, for staff, whatever. So um, I did research for a whole year before I started the second business. I had to make sure that this industry wasn't going anywhere, right? I, I wanted to, to invest in a product-based business that wasn't just a fad. Um, nurses, healthcare industry isn't going anywhere. It's pandemic-proof, Right. Who was at work the whole time when we were all locked up inside? Nurses and doctors, right? It's recession proof. People are still going to be getting, you know, health care and going to the hospital it, when this recession drops. And the nurses and people are going to still need uniforms. And they're going to still, there's still going to be schools are still going to be moving on and they're going to need uniforms. I did my research before I jumped in it just because somebody said it was a cool thing. I'm so beyond, I can be able to dodge all the shiny object syndrome. I'm paying attention, right? So some people, they're, they're like, how did you come up with scrub life? Like, or scrub business, what, what made you do that? And I said, I, I, I did my research. I didn't just jump in blinded. I did my research. So as you grow in business, you'll be able to identify these things and, and do it the right way. So, you know, check out, you know, and I checked out my, uh, the industry is growing. Right. I just seen online that the nursing, there's a shortage of nurses. I can't believe it because I know a lot of people in nursing school, but there's a shortage of, of nurses. So as those nurses are coming in, they need uniforms. Right. And we get I'm telling you, our store, we get phone calls every day for people looking for uniforms. So it was a smart move. And I knew that I probably could get it to millions fast based on what I learned running powerhouse and running my own, own business. So the business basics is what I tell people is really focus, you know, figure out your name. Do you have a name in mind? Have you checked it out on USPTO, United States Patent and Trademark? You know, have you checked that out to make sure it's not trademark, make sure it's not utilized by somebody else, right? Um, is it realistic, professional, and clear? You know, sometimes, you know, depending on where we're from, we want to come up with a... Um, you know, we want to come up with a, a logo and sometimes the logo is a little ratchet or a little bright or a little cartoony or not professional enough. And, and you know, like there's a thin line between unprofessional and professional and just kind of all over the place. You have to make sure that it's clear, it's concise. People can pay it when they see it. People know, oh, that's what it says. It's not like bulky and bubbly. Like it's very you need to know, like when you're creating your business name, you know, get some ideas because sometimes, you know, we're all up in our head and we're making stuff up and we think it's good doesn't mean it's good. So you got to get some advice on that and, and get some people's um, opinions. Right. What does your bio look like? 
Because if I'm going to buy from somebody and I could tell you now, if I buy from you, I got to see your receipts. When have you done this for somebody else? And, you know, do you have a do you have a video? Do you have a testimonial page? What do you have? Like, what is your bio? Show me your background, your degrees, your certifications. Like, just so I know that this is what you do. So get together your personal bio and add your business bio to it. Get it edited by a copywriter or, or now chat GPT. I'm telling you, I've, I've had clients put their personal bio, put a few senses chat GPT, said add this to my bio, make it flow, blend it up, and there you got a bio. Then you got a bio. If you're not dabbling in chat GPT, you're missing out on a great business tool. OK, so you can get somebody and, and edit that for you or you can use ChatGPT to help you out. Right. Um, and then you can also create a, just a new business bio. But your bio has to show that you are the person for them to hire for this business. You have to show that you've been doing this for a long time or you're an expert in what you do or what you're trying to sell. All right. Do you have good pictures? Right. Do you have I'm telling you, ChatGPT. I'm telling you, you know, we have some of those fake images. People are putting their head to all these fake images on ChatGPT. I'm not mad. Just make sure it looks realistic because you could save yourself a whole lot of money on a photo shoot right now. I believe in real photo shoots and I've done several. I have several professional photos done of myself. But if I was on a budget and I couldn't afford it, I would use chat. chat uh, I would use um, AI photos. And make sure they looked my size. I wasn't 50 pounds smaller. <laughs> and it, it was outfits that I normally wore. I would use that. I would, And I wouldn't think twice. Okay. So website, do you have a good URL? You don't have a super long one. That it's like Chandra's build a bear workshop and cafe.com. Like that's too long. <laughs> get, get a short website or as short as possible sometimes it's, it's hard based on your name and you want it to be clear you don't want it to be just letters sometimes you know it just depends but just make sure that it's not a super long website and it makes sense for your business hey 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 marla nice to see you I haven't seen you in a long time happy married life i know you got married marla is one of my former powerhouses started a um, consulting, educational consulting business and done very well in her educational consulting business. Great to see you, Marla. Okay. Uh, what is your mission, vision, and values? Where, what is your whole mission of your business? What is your vision, your longtime vision for it? And what are your values for your, for your company? So get those in line for your business. So then, you know, right, you know, the direction you're going, you know, what you stand for, and you know, you know what you believe in. Yeah. You've been hella busy. Okay, yes, please call me with all the news. You know I love to hear the news. I love to hear all the updates. Uh, build the brand, right? Create your branding material, right? And this is branding to me. You have to build your personal brand. You have to go online. You have to post. You have to market yourself and build that brand. That is truly your brand. What are you known for? What do people know you for? And this is secondary brand stuff, like the logo, right? Getting a really nice logo done, get it professionally done. All right. Fonts. What fonts are you using on your website and on your logo? Making sure all that matches. What colors are you using for your business on your website, on your, um, on your business cards, on your flyers, making sure everything is aligned and everything is, are the same colors and you, you stick with the same colors. You get all the color coding and everything to make sure that you're really hitting it and you know exactly what, you know, um, you have all these on a file and you know, okay, I use this font for this and I use this font and this colors, you know, for my businesses. So any, if you had any designer working on it, an independent designer, you could just pass them all these numbers and, and, and data uh, for your brand and they can create your flyers and they don't have to just be guessing what kind of colors you're using, right, for your brand. All right. And that's a, a branding sheet on a branding sheet. You have all your colors with their color codes. You have the fonts. You have kind of the aesthetic of your brand is your aesthetic. Hope, you know, um, I want to say boot. Um, what, what is that? Is that boho or whatever? Or is it modern? Right. Is it uh, futuristic? Like what is your aesthetic in your business? Right. So you got to get all those on a branding sheet. So then when people create anything for you, you can just pass them the branding sheet. 
um, and then build the brand. Where can you be found on social media? Right. If you are not found on social media, I'm telling you, you're not going to sell anything. You know, there, you could in different ways, like if you do B2B and you're cold calling. I'm just saying, like, if you're starting a business and it's an online business or your audience. But, but even if, if you are like everybody is on social media. Everybody is. So there's opportunities there. I'm not saying that that social media is the end all be all. Right. But if you're not on social media, that you're missing out on opportunities because there's so much opportunities out there because there's so many people, even on your personal page. And I have some people be like, I keep my business page and my personal page separate. I like to da, 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 da. I'm like, that's BS to me. It's BS because because there are people on your personal page that will buy or they will refer you. I built my business on personal social media because somebody knew somebody that knew somebody that referred me. Okay. Or they said, oh, my school needs this consultant or so-and-so wants to meet with you because they want to bring you on this nonprofit on this grant that they're writing and they want to write your services into this project. So you got to build that. All right. So where can you be found on social media? You know, out of your page. Are you on there? Are you posting a flyer once a week only? Have you posted one flyer or or posted one thing about your business? And then you disappeared. All right. So you have to do it. You have to post yourself on social media. You have to build your brand. What are you known for? Do people know you as inspiring, empowering, and you want to up level women? You want women to be in that. That's what I'm known for. I built this brand, but I was building my brand before I even started my business. I was already known as an inspiration and empowerment. So creating Powerhouse Academy was second nature. So it made sense. So if you're an educator and you're posting about educational stuff, you're posting articles or whatever, and then you start an educational consulting business, it makes sense. That's you've already been building your brand. Personal brand. Right. And I already talked about this a little. What do you do? How do you do it? What does your social media say about you? If I go on your social media page on your Instagram or your Facebook, am I going to know what you stand for and what business that you have or I'm not? If I'm not, then you're missing opportunities there. If I don't see anything on your social media about your business, you're missing a whole lot of business there. Okay. What will your colleagues say about you? If somebody was to ask somebody, what does Chandra do? Who is Chandra? They're going to say Chandra's the powerhouse. Chandra founded the powerhouse. That's how people introduce me because I built a brand. Build a brand where people already know who you are or they know your brand even before they even know your name. There's people that just know me as the powerhouse. They don't even know my name. They don't really even know me. They just know my brand and that's enough for me. I don't care. All right. Um, send a message to three people and ask them the first three words that come to mind. When people think about you, I want you to do that. Just a little activity for yourself. So see, see what you stand for, see what people, you know, and, and then, and then see how it, all three of them align. And that's how you come across online. All right. What are you selling? What's your product or service? Are you clear on your product or service? You got to get clear, right? You want to start a business. Say you want to be a life coach or you want to, you want to, to do financial education. Okay. What are you going to sell? If you want to sell financial education workshops, what, it, what kind of workshop is it going to be? What are you offering? Who are you offering it to? What's the price of it? You got to get clear on your product and your service, right? Is there a need for it? Do, do people even want what you're trying to sell? What will the prices be, right? What, what is the, uh, is it competitive and worth your time, right? What are your competitors' prices? Figuring all that out. Who are your potential clients? Now, this is huge, big deal. And a lesson that I learned and I try to teach people early. Early on in my business, I didn't even know who the hell I was selling to. I was just online, just throwing stuff in the air, trying to see what caught, you know, what, what people would catch. I didn't know. I had to figure this out. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to market. I had to hire coaches to do all that. I learned all this. I'm telling you, when you hire me, you're getting about $80,000 worth of coaching. Visibility coaching, sales coaching, scaling coaching, marketing coaching, business credit coaching. I've hired every coach. 
because I was like, I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to learn all this stuff faster. And what I learned is to get in my coach's speedboat so I don't have to take the paddle boat. Do you get it? You want to take the paddle boat to your to your success or do you want to take the speedboat? Take the speedboat if you want. I mean, get a coach if you want to take the speedboat. If you want to take a paddle boat, try to figure it out yourself. You're going to be on the paddle boat. Who are your potential clients? Why do they need you, right? Why do their clients need me? My clients need me because they're women. They're ambitious. They ha have had a big, huge idea for a long time, and they haven't launched it because they're all over the place. They have so many ideas, and they don't know where to start. Those are my people. Those are the people that come to me. Right. So that's how I know. And I speak to them. And I know they need me because I've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women across the country do it. So I have evidence that there's women out there that need me. Right. What are their pain points? What is bothering them? And I just told you my clients pain points. They've been trying everything and then it's not working out. They have too many ideas. They don't know where to start. First. They don't know what business to launch. Get this phone call. <coughs> excuse me how and where do you find them where do you find your clients because some people be like my clients aren't on facebook how do you know how do you know your clients aren't on facebook how do you know your clients aren't on instagram okay i've had a client where i had to tell oh, your your clients are mostly on going to be on linkedin and this is how you're going to find them your clients are going to be these professionals that are very busy they have a lot of money but they're busy and they need help with this thing and we had to pivot her marketing to be on LinkedIn to find those clients and directly reach out to them and make them offers. So you got to be able to identify those clients. And then when you identify who they are, go get them. You can't just put your business out there and hopefully people are going to come to you. That's not how business works. You have to go get your clients. You have to market consistently and you have to go get them. All right. And do your clients have money or a budget to pay you? So I've had people come to me and they're like, I want to start a business that's going to coach college students. And I'll be like, OK, college students are broke. A lot of them are. Oh, they have parents money. Right. But the parents money is really focused on their living needs. Right. Taking care of them. So if you're marketing to college students, you have to think about it. You know, college students might not be a good target market for you. So let's think about, okay, maybe you have a product that's for a college students. So maybe you're targeting the parent because the parent would be the one paying you. That's really your client. It's not going to be the student because they're broke. They don't have the money to pay you. They're going to go to their parent to pay you. <laughs> so you really have to dig deep and figure out who, who's going to, and, and does your client have money to pay you, right? I work with professional women, high level positions and roles. They have other income to pay for coaching. They value personal and professional development. So they have money to invest in themselves, right? They don't second guess themselves. They don't waste their money on other things. They, they put their money into themselves. Those are my clients and those are my customers. So I know who I'm talking to, right? I don't, I don't never convince or push anybody to work with me, right? And I tell people, do not invest in yourself unless you can. Like, don't force it. And it has to be a high priority to you. When I first invested, I leveraged credit, loans, um, everything to get coaching. And I wasn't worried about it because, and grants, because I, I was going to pay it back. And I knew it, my long vision, I knew, and I believed in myself that much. So just knowing your client is necessary, knowing who your client is to the core is so important before you even move forward. What tools, legal documents do you need? Contracts, invoices? Your trademark, excuse me, LLC, a, you know, appointment setter, you know, how can people book a call with you? Um, CRMs, that's your email server list, your list server um, program that you use. And I use Active Campaign. It's where I keep my huge email list, right, to be able to send emails to clients and not just on social media. Hi, Tia. The Powerhouse Business Program is packed with learning information and resources. So vital to starting your business or helping you grow. I wish I found this earlier. Oh, thank you, Tia. Tia is one of my clients. I appreciate you. Create a list of potential team members and their roles that you're going to need, right? I, I hired a virtual assistant before I even knew exactly what I was doing because I was working and I needed to duplicate myself. 
I needed that virtual assistant to start building my brand. I had the vision. So I just told her what to do on my vision. Right. I started building the vision, building the vision with her. And I hired her before I even knew the direction. So, you know, I don't know what my instincts were at that time that made me do it. Because right now I don't encourage it 100 percent unless you have a lot of residual income to do it. Then I tell you to do it. But if you are like I'm paying you as my coach right now, then I show you ways on how to, to really save on expenses. So you're not just like putting all your money into things because you see me doing it. Right. Because I'm level 10 and you're level one. That doesn't mean you go and start spending the money that I'm spending. So you have to understand what level you're at and start there. All right. So director of operations, a COO, project manager. These are all things that you're probably going to need as you build and you grow. But these are important roles to have. And then setting quarter goals. Right. Set your goals for each quarter. Right. There are dreamers there are planners and the planners make their dreams come true. This is why it's so important to know and have a plan to have an end of the uh, rainbow, an end of the tunnel. You know exactly where you're going. You're not just making stuff up and and trying it as you go. OK, you're not just trying a whole bunch of things. So you got to set some quarter one goals, quarter two goals, quarter three, quarter four. And, you know, I do that with my clients, right? Quarter one is I tell them set up systems, contracts, online presence, start putting yourself out there, right? Building your brand, like I said, and, and establish some sales goals. How much money do I want to make? You have to be clear every month. How much money do I want to make this month to cover my expenses, to cover all my bills and have all this residual income to invest, to go on trips, do whatever I want to do. How much money do you have to make? So then you know, OK, I need to make ten thousand dollars this month. OK, so say if you have a product that's a thousand dollars, I got to sell 10 of those. How are you going to sell 10 of those? Do you know where your clients are? Are you reaching out to clients to sell that one thousand dollar product or service? So you have to know you have to hold all these things in place. If not, you're just going to be hoping that it's going to happen. All right. So building your authority, your online presence in the industry, finding your clients, sending messages to your network, letting people know you're in business. These are like all things that you should be doing in quarter one. If you're just starting out, especially. OK, I'm not going to go through all of this. So this is quarter one, quarter two, April, May, June, review quarter one action, see where you got right. Hire support if you need it and start building relationships and collecting client testimonials. If you have client testimonials, you know, from the first quarter or from the year before, you know, these are just things that, so you're not overwhelmed in quarter one, quarter two, just ideas that I gave to some of my clients. Quarter three is increase your sales goal. If you have proof in quarter one and quarter two that you did $10,000, then go to quarter three, let's do 15. You have proof that you could, can to make the money. You just got to sell five more. That's not hard. <laughs> review your last two quarters and what you can do differently. And then, um, yeah, open to each business need. I don't know what that means. I did this a long time ago. And then I quarter four, I didn't add content because it always changes depending on who I'm working with at the time. So, so you guys get the, get the point. Okay. I'm going to remove this off the screen, but, um, thank you all for joining today and watching and for everybody on Instagram for watching as well. I hope this helped you. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you got something out of it and you learned something like i mentioned in my videos the last two days i'm i'm creating cohort 18 right powerhouse cohort 18 and we're going in it together we're going to close out 2023 with a bang if you're interested in joining my powerhouse reach out to me i already have a few women that are locked in and solid and ready to join they're like, I'm not playing with myself anymore. It's now or never. And I could tell you in 2017, that's exactly what I said to myself. It's now or never. I ain't playing with my future anymore. And I hope you don't either. All right. So you guys um, have a blessed day. I'm off to the dental conference so I can get more business for Scrub Life because we don't stop. And if you are in the medical field and, and you have some contacts, reach out to us because we can provide any uniform, any color, any budget. Uh, for your uniform needs. All right, everybody, you guys have a blessed day. Take care and talk to you later. Bye.